Before you stands the humble Proxon Thermocut. Well, it's a little bit different than normal. I've actually made a couple of modifications to my Proxon and I wanted to take you through this and show you what I've done. Give you a little bit of the information if you want to attempt this yourself. It's definitely not perfect and there are things that need to be changed, but I will address that at the end. So let's go ahead and get started talking about my Proxon Thermocut upgrade. All right, let's go ahead and go over all of the different parts that I've used in this build. Let's start off with this. Um, this is another Speed Square from Swanson. This one being a uh, eight inch Speed Square. Um, I use this because this allows me to get in and square up the fence when I need to. I'll show you that a little bit later here. On the table here, we've got the everything that I've used to do this. I went ahead and disassembled this. So we've got, um, uh, from this here, we've got two different uh, 12 inch long series 10 tri-channel extruded aluminum pieces. Tri-channel means there are three channels and there's a flat side, which has no channel in. Uh, for these, these are gonna be the rails. You could use regular, I went ahead and used tri-channel because I figured I could put something on this end. It never actually came to fruition, so that one doesn't really matter. Uh, then we've got a 14 inch tri-channel, again, series 10, one inch by one inch, extruded aluminum, uh, one of these. This is gonna be for the fence. Uh, and this gives us something flat to push against. This is uh, uh, what I've been using this so far has been really nice. For a longer fence, we've got a 14 inch series 10. This is a three inch by one inch uh, bit of extruded aluminum here. So we've got channels on all sides. Couldn't find this with a single flat side, but this does a really good job if I need something that is more than an inch, if I need more space to butt this up against. Uh, we got a, a, an assembly of tools here, a uh, quarter inch drill bit. Uh, this is an L wrench for some of the bolts. Uh, this is uh, another uh, uh, tool that I have here from an actually an iFixit toolkit that I've used for a couple of others here. Uh, the hardware for the most part uh, is coming from a couple of different places. All of the aluminum uh, has been sourced from um, 8020.net, which is where I purchased and, and, purchased and, uh, and uh, had them shipped from there. In addition, uh, from there, I also got two of these one inch by one inch corner uh, connectors. Uh, I don't like these. Um, I'll, I'll explain a little bit why later when we go to the assembly, but I would probably get a three hole two by one, or if I was getting separate uh, separate connectors for that, uh, a, uh, a four hole um, connector uh, for that, which is a two by two. Uh, something along that lines, but these these do the job in the end. Uh, I've got two low profile um, quarter twenty. That's one uh, one quarter inch uh, for the bolt with twenty threads per inch. These are half an inch long, um, and I've got two of these. These are smaller profile. They're going to be used to connect this to the fence, and then I've got uh, down here twelve different. Uh, economy T-nuts and these are what we use to engage the rail. I'll show you that here in a moment real quick. So I got 12 of these. So all the aluminum, uh, the connector, the two low profile bolts and the economy T-nuts I got all from 8020 in one order. The rest of this I actually picked up from, from McMaster including this, this wrench here. So um, we've got three quarter inch long, quarter 20 bolts uh, with a larger head here. Uh, this is specifically so that I've got a, a better connection with, with a larger uh, L wrench there. I've got 10 of these bolts that we're gonna end up using. Uh, I've got one uh, quarter 20 low profile nut, about half size there. Sometimes I, I think these are called jam nuts. And then I've got uh, washers for the uh, for the bolts, uh, and I've got them uh, a number of them. I didn't actually count to care enough. So this is going to be what we're using to install the uh, all the upgrades. We've got rails and the fence, the equipment to mount it, 
uh, and then a speed square dedicated to keeping it square on the rails. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Proxon now. We'll show you how we're going to be mounting this. So you're seeing a little bit ahead here is I got a little bit farther in this and I forgot uh, that I was going to show you this. So let's go and discuss how T-Channel works. So this is um, a bolt here, uh, a quarter 20 bolt uh, with what is called an economy T-nut. Uh, there's various versions of these T-nuts. Um, this has just happened what I, what I went with. The way these works is that the T-nut slides in there and show you that own end here if we can. It grips the inside. Now the the main thing with this is you've only got a certain amount of play there. Uh, you see the uh, the screw has bottomed out. It won't go any further. If you use a screw that is too short, uh, you end up with a problem where you can't get this to go in. If you end up using a screw that is too long, let's say for instance, we just screw this down further. It, it won't feed on because it's too long here. Ideally, if you have the time, patience, and tools, you can take a longer bolt and then cut it down once you've determined the right height. In this case, I am using stacks of washers so that we have just enough height to be able to engage the T-channel. All right, let's go ahead and continue with where we were. Let's go and talk about where we're going to be mounting this. Um, so we're going to be, uh, first off, as you can tell, this is a destructive upgrade. We are going to be putting holes in our Proxon. Uh, that's, however, not too much to worry about for these sides here. Uh, if you take the rails off, it'll look bad, but it's not going to cause any any actual harm. Uh, underneath, uh, if, uh, if you have installed your Proxon, you remember this since you had to install the arm initially. I've taken the arm off, but we have, for the most part, just a, uh, a shell of plastic. And uh, we're not going to go anywhere near the power supply over here for, for this upgrade. Um, we're going to be sticking right down in here. So this is the back, and this is the front. Now... In an ideal world, we would be able to go through and install this flush with the top of the bed here, but that really is not going to be able to happen for us. Um, for this front side, uh, if we ins try and install flush, I, I drilled a, a test hole here. This is simply a, uh, a quarter inch drill bit. We run across a problem where uh, we end up cutting into this area here. I still want to be able to use this completely as it came out of the box. And if we ran uh, bolts and stuff through here, we would end up mar we end up causing a problem with the the track and not being able to use the track there. The, so we're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to be cutting, uh, setting the the rails at this point down with this bottom edge so to grab a piece of this to show you what i mean uh, we are going to be resting it right on this lip here this will get this far enough down that when we put the holes in it'll avoid that track these are since these are one inch we want this in the exact center uh, i've used my calipers to mark up a half an inch uh, and I start uh, and I marked it and then simply drilled into it. I'm going to ream that out slightly here. Just like so. Here we go. Uh, so I've got all those mounted. Then we go to the other side. Let's flip this around here. And on this side, uh, it is in a similar situation, but we don't have a 
a place to go through and uh, and rest it real easy. So you have to sort of decide where you're going to go here. These do not have to be uh, equally level. Uh, in fact, mine aren't. They're, they're in different heights, which honestly does not cause a problem. But you, you determine initially where your line's going to be. You mark a half an inch down, and then you do the same. You drill in. You ring these out slightly here. Just like so. Once we have these done, then we're gonna go through the process of mounting the hardware. Let's go ahead and jump over to that now. So we have our holes drilled and we have to go through now and install the, uh, the bolts with enough spacers, uh, so as I mentioned in uh, when I was talking about the T-channel, so that we, we don't have too much sticking out. Now, I've done this before, uh, and I, uh, through experimentation, found that on the front side, I need six washers. On the back side, I need seven. This will give me the connection that I need. So I'm using four holes, uh, as you see here, uh, and these really straightforward. We feed them through like so. Um, with this lip here, uh, I will almost certainly just have to use Oop. installing it correctly, Daniel. Here we go. That one, for some reason, does not want to just push through, but that's okay. It'll it'll still do the job. I'm just going to use this. By the way, if you end up getting any of these L wrenches, get uh, one that has a ball end for the hex. This makes it you uh, makes it so you can go in at, at multiple angles. Uh, so you put enough washers in, or you get the appropriate length of screw. And you just feed them through like so. Then on the other end, let's go ahead and turn this around here. We are simply going to screw on these nuts here. Let's go ahead and prop this up a little bit. Grab that bolt that went flying. I give it just a couple of turns to make sure it is set. And then this last one down here. Then with those set, I take the tri-channel, I uh, like to use the flat side out, and we slide it over the T-nuts. This one, I think I've done too much. Yep, yeah, there we go. So, with that in place, we are going to set this at a good distance. I usually set this at about two millimeters. These don't really matter, um, uh, to be honest. Uh, you want to leave enough space so you can get your finger in and twist that. And then I'm just going to go in and lock it in place. I'm going to do this with the other side, and then we're going to go ahead and install the fence. So we got our two rails installed here. What we're gonna do now is we're going to install the fence. So the fence is longer. Uh, I did this intentionally uh, so that you have uh, a little bit of a uh, uh, over or, uh, overhang here. Um, I, uh, when I was uh, uh, got this, I had it cut by the company. So I just went ahead and went with some rough numbers here. Um, we're going to go ahead and install the corner braces first, just like so. So uh, these are using, th these are a lot simpler. Uh, we have a 
half inch quarter 20 bolt with a T-nut. And that is all we're going to be needing for that. Now, the hex size here is going to be different than what we're using. So I've got a separate, uh, a separate wrench here for this. Let's see if this will focus on us. So uh, what I generally do is I'll install the first one flush and just screwing it down. Uh, you will notice when you are installing these, at least these one by ones here, when you tighten them down, they have a tendency to twist. So just like so. So we have one installed. Then we're gonna go ahead and install the longer bolt. Now, for this one, uh, I, uh, I went ahead and I used one of these to make my life a little bit simpler. Uh, but what I found is that I needed two washers and one of these nuts. I, li I like using the nut in this case here uh, because it keeps the washers up and so I still get a little bit of a spin there and then I will put a that on like so. We need, to ha we need a little bit of elevation because we have a gap here at the bottom. Uh, so we don't, it is not flush. We need to be able to tighten this down. Uh, and I'm not entirely successful. I think I still need to customize the bolts, but uh, that basically does it for that one. Now for the other one, this is very similar. We're going to move it to that position. And you can't really put the bolt in here because, uh, well, or at least I should say you can't really put it in straight up because it's going to obstruct the access to that. So you've got to, you got to line this up first uh, and then tighten it down. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. At least tighten it down somewhat. In fact, I want this to be even. So this is why I've got this in place. So I've got a 90 degree backstop. All right. See if I can do that without the extra brace there. That should do the job for the moment. I'll tighten it up here in a minute. So now we pull off the fence, thread through the bolt, and then this side here I'm using three of these because I've got it closer to the, the surface of the bed. So let me put these back on. So before we do that, let's tighten this down really good. This is a lot harder to get into. But there we go. Feed the tea nuts through. And that is it. At this point, uh, we don't need, I don't, I don't need my smaller uh, of these tools any longer. I can simply use my L wrench, a quick tighten, 
and then a much more secure Titan. I still have some up and down play on this end, so it's not the best fit, but this is not going any back any further. So if, if you're pushing against it, you have a solid connection. This will not wobble. All right, let's go ahead and talk about some improvements at this point. All right, everything reassembled. Let's go ahead and talk about this for a moment. Overall, I'm really happy with the upgrade. This was uh, was a fun little project to do, uh, to be honest. Uh, it does uh, suffer from a few problems. Um, one is the cost. It wasn't the cheapest to get all of this since I had to have it, uh, I got it all custom cut. Uh, the shipping was, was, was the big deal there. Um, uh, but uh, aside from the cost, the equipment itself, or the hardware, the, the aluminum at least, not too big of a deal. I did end up getting an extra um, a 12 inch uh, piece cut, but it wasn't cut square. Uh, that may be a big deal for you or not. I did get an extra one in case I, I have a, some other ideas for some stuff I'm going to end up doing here. Uh, I do recommend getting extra hardware just in case because you never know. Um, uh, and uh, having extra spares is, is a really nice. I'm going to be getting some some stick on rulers. Uh, I'm going to put a ruler here and here. Uh, it is a going to be a right to left ruler uh, in metric uh, and in imperial uh, that uh, will make it so that I can set this a lot easier without having to go to the calipers. The calipers are great, um, but that little gap at the bottom, um, uh, the slight gap at the bottom does cause me some issues. If you're going to buy this, like I said, I would get a uh, the uh, the two two to one or the two, uh, for this, which is uh, two holes there and one hole this, this this should make it so that you have a lot less racking when you're installing this. Uh, because I've only got one hole on each of these, this can rotate when these aren't locked into place, and that does cause some problems. That's why I got this backstop here. So I'm not too worried about it at the moment in in upgrading these since finding the the appropriate parts is annoying, especially with uh, expensive shipping, but. Uh, but going through and uh, uh, and doing a backstop is a better short-term solution. Uh, Long-term, I would definitely get a two by one for this. Uh, and then, so I don't have to change out the mounting on the fence each time. I would probably get a couple more of these two by twos or even three by threes to mount to this so that this has its own separate corner bracket. Hope I don't need to use that too often, especially with what I'm doing. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if you are looking at a a, uh, a good solid fence for this, I, I do like this. And like I said, with the way we installed it, if you take this fence off, this should work perfectly fine with all the other various things that you slot into here. Um, I, I, as, far, as far as I know, this should work perfectly fine with all of the shifting lands. Uh, uh, fences and accessories, uh, unless something has to immediately go over the sides. If it just sets on top, it should be fine. So that is my upgrade. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those in the comment section below, and I will be more than uh, happy to answer whatever I can for you here. Uh, and I will try and include a parts list with as uh, much as I can. Uh, from the two places, like I said, the aluminum, uh, the half-inch uh, bolts, uh, the economy T-nuts, and the corner pieces I got from 8020.net, the washers, the longer three-quarter inch bolts, and the uh, the nut, the one nut that I ended up using, uh, I got that from McMaster Car, which is an excellent, excellent place for getting all sorts of hardware. So. That's it from here. Thank you all for watching. Have a great day.